Welcome to the Sunday evening service at the North Lexington Church of Christ. We'll start by singing song number 19. All hail the power of Jesus' name. No soul. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial fall. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord. With yonder sacred throng, we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Number 40. Be with me, Lord. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Following the singing of this song, we'll be led in our prayer and then our scripture reading. Know me, be with me, Lord. I cannot live without Thee. I dare not try to take one step alone. I cannot bear. The loads of life unaided. I need thy strength to lean myself upon. Be with me, Lord, and then if dangers threat. Time. If storms of trial, you'll burst above my head. If flashing seas leap everywhere up 
help me. They cannot harm or make my heart afraid. Be with me, Lord, when loneliness overtakes me. When I must weep amid the fires of pain, and when shall come the hour of my departure for worlds unknown? Oh, Lord, be with me then. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to assemble here today with these fellow Christians of ours to worship you, help us to be doing it in a worthy manner to you, in an acceptable manner to you, as you have put, laid forth for us in your word. Thank you for everything that you give us from day to day. Thank you for this time of summer that you give us, uh, some time of a little bit more relaxing and time to spend with our families. Help us to take that to our advantage and grow closer as families and also help our families to grow closer to you. Help us always to keep your word on our minds and to study it daily and to take any extra time that we have and devote it to you. Help all those families who are struggling with a loss of loved ones or who have sicknesses or illnesses, whether they be spiritually or physically, help us to be encouraging to those families and help us to strengthen them and to be good examples to them. Help us also to daily try to live our lives in a, as an example of Christians so that we can spread your word to those who don't know anything about you or those who have turned away from you so that they can share the joy of being a Christian. Help us to be focused on tonight on everything that we do to worship you and also the words that are spoken to us so that we can learn from them. Help us to go out this week and to do everything that we can to further the cause of your kingdom. And Help all the efforts that we have had in the past few weeks to help the church grow. Hopefully we've planted the seed and watered, and you will give us the increase as you see fit. Help us to do everything according to your will. In Christ's name, amen. Our reading tonight comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 1. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Imitate me, just as also I imitate Christ. If you're following along in your songbook and would like to mark the song of invitation, it will be song number 23. Prior to Brian's lesson, we'll sing song number 680, There's Not a Friend, verses 1 through 3. If you would, please, if it's convenient, please be standing as we sing this song. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. 
No, not one. No, not one. No friend like him is so high and holy. No, not one. No, not one. And yet no friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There's not an hour that he is not near us. No, not one. No, not one. No night so dark, but his love can cheer us. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Good evening. It is so good to finally be home for a while. Uh, I feel like this whole month for me has just been a whirlwind and uh Going from a mission trip to the Grand Cayman, which we're going to talk a little bit about tonight, uh, to VBS, then last week being at West Kentucky Youth Camp, uh, it's, everything's just a blur. It's been going crazy, but it's been an awesome experience. Glad I've got to do it, uh, and I'm hoping things will slow down a little bit here for, for a few days at least. Um, but it is so good to be able to be with you, uh, to be able to worship together. Um, for all that are, that are here visiting, uh, I want to express my appreciation for you being here tonight as well. Uh, I'm glad that you stopped by. I hope that you will ask any questions that you have. I hope that you will talk to one of us. Let us help you any way that we can. Um, we want you to feel welcome here. We want you to come back any chance you have. Um, tonight, I, I was asked to, to give a little bit of a, uh, a report uh, about the, the mission trip that, that we went on to the Cayman Islands. And uh, originally I was told, uh, just do, do this for... Uh, just a part of your lesson and then go on with something else. Well, I, I decided I wanted to, to do something a little bit different with uh, presenting this material. And, and I'm going to kind of talk about highlights in different parts of the trip throughout this whole lesson uh, and, and build uh, upon those things uh, as we think about things we can learn from others while on these trips. Um, about a month ago, Memorial Day, there's a group of 29 of us from five different states that left to the Cayman Islands. Uh, it's led by, by Jim Long, uh, and, and Jim Long has been taking a group to somewhere in the Caribbean, a Caribbean island every year for the past 25 years. Uh, he actually did mission work uh, back in, I think he, he said back in 78, uh, he, he was in Antigua for two, for two or three years uh, working there with, with the church. And so, so he has a lot of passion for the work done in the Caribbean. And so every year he takes a group, uh, and, and this year we went to the Cayman Islands. This was the first year that, any, that this group has ever been to the Cayman Islands. Uh, and so it was kind of a, uh, an experiment trip. Um, there, were, there were a few congregations there we were going to work with, but we wanted to go there and see what the work was like uh, and see if it was another, an island that we need to go back to again and continue to work on. The, the primary goal of our trip, and, and here's a picture. I know you can't see it real well. 
here's a picture of our group that went uh, with us to the Cayman Islands. The, the primary mission, the primary goal of our, of our trip, it was evangelism. Uh, we, our day-to-day -day activities were, we'd wake up in the morning, we'd have a devotional together, and then we'd set out to go door-to-door -door in the community, trying to reach out to others, set up Bible studies, uh, and, and try to invite people to come to the gospel meeting that we had each night. Um, every night uh, at this gospel meeting, uh, different men that were on this trip, different preachers, uh, took, took turns uh, preaching uh, that, that night. And, and it was under the theme of back to the Bible. Uh, we, we went back to the basics, talked about what it means to truly be a Christian. Uh, not talking about a, a lot of the in-depth stuff, but going back to the basics and talking about what it truly means to, to study and go back to the Bible. We, we also, each night at this gospel meeting, uh, there was one of the men from the congregation, uh, they would ask a question, and this question was directed to anyone that was not a member of the Church of Christ. So, so anyone that we had talked to and invited, uh, anyone that we, we had knocked on their door and they came, uh, or anyone from these congregations on the island that were not members of the church yet, uh, were able to answer a question that had to deal with the lesson from that night. And, and upon answering that question, they would receive a Bible. Uh, some incentive for, for those who weren't members to listen and grow uh, and, and, and challenge themselves when it comes to Scripture. We also had a nurse with us. And each night after the gospel meeting, uh, we would have this nurse that would uh, offer free blood pressure checks and reading glasses to anyone that was in need. Uh, in the Cayman Islands, uh, the, the health care is not very good. Um, all over the Caribbean, the health care is not very good. And so just this little bit of help was a big deal for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of the visitors that we had uh, at night, the people that we knocked on their door, a lot, of the, a lot of the reasons they came was because they needed their blood pressure checks or they needed reading glasses. It was a huge incentive for them. And, and so we were able to connect with these people through that. Um, a, another activity that we were able to do, uh, we were able to, to have a youth night with some of the youth one night. Uh, and, and there was a, a group of us, uh, some of them, and you'll, if you look through there, you'll see some of them that, that are just uh, out of college, some are still in college, uh, but, but we took the, the younger ones that were on the trip with us, and, and we had a youth night with some of the youth from the congregations, and, and we, we had a devotional with them and, and played different games with them, and here's one of the, one, so a couple of the kids, uh, we were talking about teamwork and leadership, and, and so we had team competitions, and this was, well, I don't know if you've seen the Minute to Win It games, or you have an Oreo on your forehead and you have to try to get it in your mouth without touching it with your hands. Uh, this is one of the things that, that we had them do and just to kind of get, get things rolling. Um, but we had a devotional with them and had a great time with them. And, and one of the things that they were passionate about and wanted to do all week is they wanted to play the Americans in basketball. And so after, after that, we went out and we, we played basketball with them and, uh, and had a good time uh, with them. We had many activities that were planned uh, to help strengthen the congregations that were there and to help build uh, and grow uh, the, the church in, in the Cayman Islands. And because of our efforts, the numbers grew each night. Uh, because of the, the people that we had contacts with, uh, every night the numbers were growing. There are actually three congregations on the island. Uh, there, there's one, uh, the West Bay Church of Christ, west end of the island. There's the East End Church of Christ, which is on the east end of the island. And then there was the Georgetown Church of Christ, which is kind of in the middle. We, we did a lot, of, a lot of work with mainly the West Bay and the East End Church of Christ. Uh, and, and a big focus, we were working with the East End Church of Christ because it was just about a year and a half old. Only had seven members uh, trying to grow, trying to, to bring, uh, reach, uh, reach out to the community. Uh, and so we spent a lot of time knocking on doors in that area as well, trying to help uh, get the, the word out about this congregation. But you see, most mission trips that you go on, uh, you, you go there with, with the purpose of, of there's people that have a need, and we need to go and we need to help them. But I think a lot of times, and, and everyone that's been on a mission trip, they'll, I think you'll agree with this, a lot of times when you go, you end up learning a whole lot more than you expected. The reason that I chose that scripture reading uh, is because in that passage, Paul is, is saying, I want you to look at my example. I want you to see what I'm doing and follow my example because I'm trying to imitate Christ. And, and, and so throughout Scripture, we see where we're called to, to look at others and to strive to follow their example. 
And, and so on this trip, just by observing and spending time with others, uh, members of the church and, and, and on that island, I think we learned a lot. A lot that we need to try to, to pull back to the states and maybe try to focus on. And so what I want us to do tonight is there are four lessons uh, that I learned, and I, I talked to, to Rhonda and Janetta a little bit about it too, and they gave me a few ideas. Um, but a few things that, that we learned from the people there that, that I think are very worthwhile for us to consider uh, tonight. The first lesson that I learned was that plan Bs show that God is in control. The, we, we flew into Grand Cayman on, on Monday afternoon. Monday was a beautiful day. Tuesday, however, it started raining and didn't stop raining until about, until about Friday evening, early after, or late afternoon, around that time. So for four straight days, it was raining. And see, that was an issue because our main goal, the, the thing that we do on these trips, is we go door to door trying to invite people. So when it's raining, it kind of uh, stifles that, that idea. Um, and, and so we had to adjust our plans. Uh, it, it caused us to have to accommodate to the weather. Uh, we sent some people to convenience stores, grocery stores, to stand outside and, and talk to people and invite people to this gospel meeting and, and try to set up Bible studies there. Uh, we, we, we did what we could w with the weather. And finally, on, on the third day, and, and for some reason they let me have a car and take a group, um, and so on the third day, I told my group, I said, look, we're going out in the rain. We're just going to do it. That's what we're here for. And so we went out in the rain, and we were soaked. And uh, we were out for about two and a half hours in the pouring rain. But it was, it was all worth it because we finally felt like we got something accomplished. You see, although things didn't work out the way that we originally planned, the, the, although we didn't get to go out at, in day one and go door to door and reach out to people that way, we were still able to do a lot of things for the kingdom. You see, God has always allowed his will to be accomplished, even if it took plan B. I, I think back to the Israelites. I, I think about how God had this original plan from the beginning. He, he, had, he had this his leader chosen, Moses, who was going to lead the Israelites in this triumphant victory out of, out of Egypt. They were going to defeat Pharaoh, uh, be led out of Egypt, taken a, a, across to the promised land, and they were going to be enter, they were enter into the land and conquer it. God had this plan that his people were going to be in the promised land. But what happened? The Israelites get to the gate of the promised land, and they don't have the faith to enter in. And so what does God have to do? God comes up with plan B. The Israelites wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And once that generation that didn't have the faith die out, they're able to go in and conquer the land. The Israelites were able to enter into the land, and God's will was accomplished, although it did take plan B. On our trip, there were definitely things that happened that caused us to have to reevaluate, caused us to have to, to change plans. And I think that we're going to find ourselves in situations in life where we have that same struggle. Things aren't going to go as planned. They, may, maybe difficulties come our way, but when we are able to trust in God, when we put all our faith and trust in Him, His will will be accomplished. We were able to do a lot of great things even though we had to adjust our plans and, and go to plan B. The second thing I, I want us to consider, the second lesson I learned from the people there, was what it means to truly be passionate about worship. Many times I, I wonder here in the States if maybe we're almost afraid to express emotion in worship. If someone were to take a picture... Uh, of each of the acts of worship, uh, and see the audience, what would it look like? I, I'm convinced that it would be a lot of straight face. Uh, there, not a lot of uh, passion behind it, not a lot of emotion, not a lot of uh, excitement or, or showing sadness. Uh, I think a lot of times we're almost afraid to show emotion in worship.
if nothing is more important to us than serving God, then why is it that we struggle showing emotion in worship? This is a picture uh, of the, the members of the West Bay Church of Christ. I always, uh, I, I've, this was my third trip. And so whenever I, we have our first worship, uh, first night of the gospel meeting uh, with the people there, I always seek out the first timers. And I ask them, what did you think? And, and I asked Rhonda this this year. Uh, I, what did you think? And she, she was almost speechless. And the only thing she kept talking about was the singing was unbelievable. The people in the West Bay Church of Christ, when it comes to singing, when it comes to, to listening to a lesson, when it comes to praying, there's no doubt in my mind how passionate they are about what's going on. During, during the lessons, uh, their facial expressions change depending on what's being said. And they have no problem letting you know it was a good point. Uh, when, when it comes to prayers, all the time you hear people uh, agreeing with, what, with, with, with what's being said or amending the prayers, uh, focused, really really listening to what's going on. And, and as Rhonda kept saying, the singing is unreal. Uh, you, can, you can see their excitement when they're singing Victory in Jesus. And you can see their sorrow when they're singing the old rugged cross. I, I led singing the last night of the gospel meeting. And with a microphone right in front of me, uh, someone on the front row said there wasn't a time except for the first note that they heard me singing. The people on that island sang with their whole hearts, sang with everything that was in them. When it comes to worship, there is no doubt that they are very passionate about what they're doing. I wonder, why is it that we struggle showing these emotions when it comes to worship? Uh, I, I, I've, I am always so uplifted whenever I'm in these, these Caribbean islands and be able to worship with these people because it is so different than what's going on in the States. And, and I'm not saying that the way we worship isn't putting our hearts into it, but the way they show their passionate, uh, their passion and their emotions in worship it's something that I, I think you would view worship in a different way if you were able to see it and be a part of it. You, you would view the singing much differently. You would view the, 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 the lessons, not just the speaker or the way he's presenting it, but the, way, the things that he's saying, you'd view them dif differently. And prayer, the same way. When it comes to being passionate in worship, I think we can all learn something from these people in the Cayman Islands. The third lesson that, that, I, that I learned, uh, that, that I think we all need to try to adapt in our lives, is it never hurts to ask. Earlier, I, I, I mentioned that the, the main goal of, of, our, of our work uh, it, it was primarily evangelistic, going door to door. Uh, and, I, and I told you that the first four days were kind of slow for us. We didn't get a lot done. But in those few days that we were able to work, we were able to, to set up and conduct 31 Bible studies with different people that aren't members of the church. That's not people that uh, have grown up in the church and they're just not Christians we're studying with. These, these are people out in the community that don't know, who, that don't know Christ that have questions and need answers, and we were there for them and had a Bible study with them and invited them to be with us at the gospel meeting. The, I, I've been in contact with a lot of the, uh, the, the ministers and other men that are still on the island, and, and I hear back from them all the time about these studies that they're doing with these people that we, we had contacts with about how, how these people that had come and visited uh, the, the gospel meetings have continued to come and be a part of the worship. All because we were willing to go out and ask people to come and study with us. There's absolutely no doubt 
that we were, we were rejected a whole lot more than people accepted our, our invitation. But there might be 31 more souls in heaven, all because we asked. There are always people who are searching for answers when it comes to, when it comes to religion, when it comes to spiritual things. There are always people that have questions and, and don't understand, but maybe they just need someone to ask them if they, if, if they want to study, if they w- would like to look for answers. Uh, if you would, let's go ahead and turn, into, turn to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. In Acts chapter 8, we see a story where, where Philip, he, he gets a, a message from an angel. And, and, and there's, this angel tells him there's this man uh, who has questions. Uh, he, he's not sure uh, what he's studying, and, and so he sends Philip to go and talk to, to this man. And we know him as the, as the Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, let's go ahead and read this text. Uh, Acts chapter 8, uh, verses uh, 29 through 31. It says, Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go up and join this chariot. So Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, Well, how could I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip in uh, uh, up and sat sat with him. Uh, Verses 34 through 36. It says, The eunuch answered Philip and said, Please tell me of whom does this prophet say, uh, say this? Of him, of himself, or of someone else. Then Philip opened his mouth and began and began from the scriptures, and he preached Jesus to him. As they went along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, "Look, water! What prevents me from being baptized?" You, you see, Philip he meets up with this eunuch, and he's reading from the book of Isaiah, and, and he do, he's not sure what it's talking about. He's not sure what's going on, and, and, and so after reading the, this passage from uh, from Isaiah, uh, he says, "Who is this?" That they're talking about. And so Philip takes advantage of this opportunity to teach him about Christ, about teach him about the salvation that comes only through the blood of Christ. And, and, and so because of this, because of his teaching, because Philip's willingness to go and ask this man if he understands what he's, what he's studying, understands what he's reading, because Philip took the time to ask this Ethiopian eunuch, he sees this water and he says, well, what's preventing me from being baptized? I wonder what would have happened if Philip didn't ask the Ethiopian eunuch what was going on. I wonder what would have happened if, if Philip would have, would have just been, said, oh, I'm too busy to go do that. I wonder what would have happened to the Ethiopian eunuch. My gut tells me he would have stayed the way he was. He was reading, he didn't understand, he didn't have anyone, anyone there to teach him. But because Philip took the time to ask if he understood what he was reading, ask if he could help him, ask if he could study with him, because he took the time to ask, this Ethiopian eunuch was saved. Many times, I think we choose not to ask someone to study with us, but you never know the result that might come from doing it. I learned that the people in the Cayman Islands, the people all over the Caribbean, are very receptive to you going and asking them to study. And and I understand that maybe they're more receptive than people are here. But the lesson that I learned from them is that it never hurts to ask. We're going to be rejected. We're going to be turned down. People aren't going to want to study with us. But you never know what's going to happen if you don't ask. The The final thing that I want us to think about the final thing that, that I learned that, that I, I think is worth talking about is that investing time in others produces res- results. This is a picture of a lady uh, that I had to study with, uh, and her name is Audrey. It was the, the last day of the rain, so Friday, the day that, that I took my group out in, in the pouring rain. Uh, we, we met this lady, and, and she incredibly sweet lady. And, and so we, we began talking with her. 
And we stood on her doorstep and talked to her for probably 20 or 25 minutes. Upon finishing our conversation with her, she said, I'm definitely going to be there at the gospel meeting tonight. I want to be there. And she actually, while we were there, she said, hold on a minute. And she walked over to her neighbor and knocked on her neighbor's door and said, hey, let's go to this gospel meeting. And so her neighbor said, yeah, yeah, we'll both go. So, so Miss Audrey told me that, that she was going to be there. But then she said, but here's the thing. If something comes up and I'm not able to come, I want you to call me. And so she, she wrote down her number and she gave it to me. And, and so... I uh, got to the gospel meeting that night looking for Miss Audrey, and she didn't show up. Uh, so obviously I was a little upset that she wasn't there. Uh, I thought it was a good contact. Um, so so I, I, we, we, we went on. Well, instead of calling her, I decided I, we were just going to go back by her house. Uh, it was towards the end of the week. We had covered most of the area. Uh, and so I just I had a little bit of free time. So me and my car, we just went back over to her house and knocked on the door. And when she, when she opened the door and saw who it was, she just opened the door and said, come in, come right in. And, she, and so we made us sit down, grabbed her Bible, and wanted to study with us. Uh, Miss Audrey uh, was a Pentecostal, um, but she was very open to studying, wanted to, wanted to learn, wanted to grow. And, uh, and she told us from the first time we sat down, she said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to be with you tonight at the gospel meeting uh, because we have a prayer meeting tonight. And so we said, that's, that's fine. We just wanted to study with you for a while. So we studied with her for about an hour, hour and a half, and uh, had a great time with her, great conversations. Um, when we got done, she said, all right, uh, you guys come pick me up tonight. I'm going with you. And, and so all of us that were there, there was, a group, there was five of us there that were studying uh, with her, and all of us were, were kind of taken aback because she had told us already she wasn't coming. Um, but, but she wanted to come with us. And, and so that night we picked her up. And we brought her to the gospel meeting. And the other thing, the reason that this was impressed me so much is because halfway through, the, the first week we were at, at the west, west side of the island uh, at, at a church there doing the gospel meeting. And that's where our hotel was. And that's the side of the island that Miss, Miss Audrey was at. Well, the second, second week we were in the east end of the island, which is about 45 minutes away, but Miss Audrey wanted to go. And we told her, we said, look, it's 45 minutes. We're going to get in back late. She said, that, I don't care. Let's do it. So, so she went with us, and there were lots of people reaching out to her from the congregations, wanting to get to know her, uh, talking to her. Uh, when we, we got back to her, to her house that night, she made us come in with her again, and, and she began telling us uh, a, lot of, a lot of her personal life story uh, about how her husband was back in Jamaica, and he's been sick and to the point where they don't know how much longer he's going to be around and the health care is so bad there that they don't provide the necessities for him. And so we were able to get contact information for, for him, and we're sending a care package uh, to him with, with some of his needs. Um, we were able to have just this great relationship uh, with, with Audrey, all because we were able to invest a little bit of time with her. The, the thing that impressed me a lot about Miss Audrey is we were leaving the next morning, and she called a taxi and showed up at our at our hotel that morning because she wanted to say bye to us before we left. Um, incredible lady. But the reason that she was able to change her mind, turn her mind around about the church, is because we were willing to invest a little bit of time in her. Investing time in others and showing them that you care truly does go a long way. Uh, immediately when I was thinking about this, my mind went, to John Mark. Uh, I started thinking about this interaction that Paul and Silas had with each other as they're beginning to go on the second missionary journey in, in Acts chapter 15. And this discussion about who's going to be their helper, who's going to go with them. And Barnabas decides that he wants John Mark to go back with them. And, and, and Paul remembers John Mark was the one that left us in that first missionary journey, and, and we don't want him to come along. Uh, he, he left us before. We need someone we can count on. And so Paul didn't want to have anything to do with John Mark. But we see where Barnabas chose to, to invest some time into John Mark, help him grow. And so he takes him with him on those, on those next journeys, on the, the missionary journey. We see that because, because Barnabas was willing to invest that time into John Mark that he needed, he was able to grow. Uh, he was able to become someone uh, that he wasn't on that first trip. 
In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 11, we see Paul's reaction and Paul's remarks when it comes to John Mark later in life. As Paul is talking to Timothy, he says, Only Luke is with me. Pick up Mark or John Mark and bring him with you, for he is youthful, or he is useful to my service. You see, Paul was this man who didn't want to have anything to do with John Mark because he remembered that he deserted them in the first journey. But Barnabas invested this time and challenged John Mark and pushed John Mark, and because of that, Paul saw that John Mark truly was someone that was, that was useful to his service. Investing time in others is what's going to help them grow. When it came to Miss Audrey, the reason that she came and was a part uh, of, of our gospel meeting was because she saw that we cared about her and because we were willing to spend some time with her. I, I, still, I still pray for, these, for Miss Audrey and the people we've studied with while we were there uh, very often because the work that's going on there right now, this follow-up work that these, these men and the preachers are doing, is a, is a, it's a tough challenge. There's 31 people that we had contacts with that they're trying to reach out to, that they're trying to invest time in. And, and I pray often that these men are able to invest that time into them because it's that time, that, that showing them that you care, that truly makes a difference. The, the trip that we went on, overall, was incredibly successful. Yeah, we, there were some bumps in the road. Yeah, there were some challenges that we faced. Uh, yeah, things didn't go the way we wanted all the time. But everything worked out in a way that we were able to help strengthen and grow the church there in the Cayman Islands. It, it's so encouraging to me to be able to go places all over the world, to be able to, to go to, to countries uh, that are far away from here and see people who are striving to serve God to the best of their ability. It's so encouraging to know that God's people are, are all over the world. You see, there are many things that we, we can learn from people from all over the world. People that we go to thinking we're going to be helping them, thinking they're the ones that are in big need, thinking that they're the ones uh, that are struggling so bad and we have to go over to help them. But you see, we learn so much from those people. And, and, and I hope that these things that, that I learned, these things that, that have, have encouraged me from these trips, are things that we're able to think about and try to implement in our lives. Because the church, although we, we focus and use the Bible as our standard, we all have strengths and weaknesses. And these things that, that we've discussed some tonight are some of the strengths that I see in the congregations over in the Cayman Islands. And maybe some of those things we struggle with a little bit. I want to encourage you that when it comes to situations in your life where plan A isn't working out, I want you to remember that plan B's come in effect because they show us that God is still in control. I want you to think about whenever you enter into a worship service, I want you to think about how passionate are you? Are you going through the motions? Or are you truly taking in what we're doing? Whenever we're around people of the world, I want you to remember that it never hurts to ask. Sure, you're going to be rejected sometimes. But you never know what's going to happen unless you ask. And I want you to remember that those people that may be struggling, those people that we need to reach out to, the only way they're going to see the church differently is we're willing to invest time in them. I learned a lot from being on this mission trip. And I hope that we're able to, to learn and grow from the things that I was able to learn from being there. Tonight, how's your faith? How's your walk with God? Where are you at spiritually? Are you facing struggles? Are there things that are holding you back? Are there things that are keeping you from being who you're called to be? Tonight you have that, that ability to come forward, to, to turn your life back over to God, to ask for the strength from, the, from your family here, to ask God to forgive you 
to start back on this path heading toward Christ. Maybe tonight you haven't put on Christ in baptism. And maybe you haven't become a member of the church. What's holding you back? What's keeping you from making that decision tonight? Tonight, if you understand that you're in a lost state and you need to do something about it, you have that opportunity to make a change. If there's something tonight that we can do to assist you, I'd let you come now as we stand and as we sing. spread, ye famishing, ye weary, come, and thou shalt be richly fed. Hear the invitation, come ye so ever will praise God for full salvation for you so ever will all things are ready come to the feast Come, for the door is open wide, a place of honor is reserved for you at the Master's side. Invitation, come who so ever will. Praise God for full salvation for who so ever will. Oh, Things are ready, come to the feast, leave every care and worldly strife, come feast upon the love of God, and drink everlasting life. Invitation, come who so ever will. Praise God for full salvation for who so ever Be seated, please. The Lord's table, table has been left prepared. If anyone was unable to partake of, this, of it this morning, we'll sing the first verse of song number 781, Wonderful Story of Love. During the singing of this verse, if you'll come to the front two rows, we'll sing another song after that, and you'll be served. Verse 1 only. Wonderful story of love, tell it to me again. Wonderful story of love, wake the immortal strain. Angels with rapture announce it, shepherds with wonder receive it. Sinner, oh, won't you believe it? Wonderful story of love. 
better prepare the minds of those that are gathered. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of song number 80. Beneath the cross of Jesus. Verses 1, 3, and 4. <clears throat> Domino beneath the cross of Jesus, I pain would take my stand. The shadow of a mighty rock. Within a weary land, a home within the wilderness, a rest upon a wing from the first of the noontide heat and the burden of the day upon that cross of Jesus my life at last can see the dying form of one who suffered there for me and from my smitten Heart with tears to wonders I confess the wonders of his glorious love and my own worthless. I take across thy shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face, content to let the world go by, to know no gain nor loss, my sin self my only shame my glory on the cross
Together, let's read from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, in the midst of a prayer of petition for his dear brethren. The apostle transitions to an expression of gratitude. Verse number 12 reads this way. Giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. Remarkable thing we possess. We have redemption. We've been purchased from servitude. We're free. But we have forgiveness, remission, the forgiving of a debt that we could never pay. This is possible only through the power of blood. Power of blood that is the fruit of the power of love, for we're in the kingdom of the Son of His love. A love that freed us from the power of darkness, the power that we could not escape. None of which is possible without the power of God to whom we give thanks for giving us access to the light. Let's give thanks. Almighty God and holy ruler, sovereign, creator and almighty, we humble ourselves in your presence with great gratitude. So thankful for the scheme that allows us in your eternal and divine wisdom to have access to your grace and your mercy that allows us to achieve what is impossible by any human behavior, by any human plan, by any human scheme. That is to achieve reconciliation, to have removed from our account the sins of which we are all guilty. We're grateful for this period of our worship, the way it's been designed to help us to reflect together upon our perpetual our continual and our earnest need for salvation through Jesus. Help us to reflect upon His body, upon the physical dwelling of our Lord, who endured for us what we deserved in order to, to make atonement for our sins. Thank you for this bread and help us to take it remembering His body, His life, and His sacrifice. In His name we pray. Amen. Holy Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for valuing us far above that which we deserve. Thank you, Father, for your patience and mercy, for your willingness to view us not as we are, as enemies, but to view us as individuals, precious creations, worthy of the greatest of all expense, worthy of the payment of the blood of Jesus Christ. We're thankful in our worship to have an opportunity 
to physically remind ourselves of His blood, to offer this memorial, to experience it together as we contemplate the painful way that His blood was offered, and to re recall just how needful we are of its cleansing power. Thank you for this fruit of the vine and the worship that allows us to enjoy it. May we partake in a way that's pleasing to you and helpful to us. In Jesus' name we pray. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is. Set it at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Brian alluded to it in his lesson. You live here in this nation, you're wealthy. You have shoes, you have running water, you have food, you have a roof, you have a bed. You're in the richest population of this world. We don't even know it. We would have none of those things if it weren't for the giving nature of God. We live in a world in physical bodies that cause us sometimes to concentrate on those things. This is the part of our worship where we free ourselves from that. We reflect on the source of all gifts and we return to Him what belongs to Him. Let's give thanks together. Dear Father, thank you for blessing us and loving us and providing us so richly with everything that we need and more than we need. Thank you for caring for us in such an abundant way spiritually, in Jesus Christ and in fellowship with one another through his blood in the church. Thank you for the physical provisions that we enjoy. Help us, Father, to appreciate the great and wonderful blessings that we have, to always be mindful to try to perceive the the unknown things, but help us to be prudent and acceptable stewards of the things which are visible. These things that belong to you, help us to give them back in a way that demonstrates a heart of gratitude, a willingness to express divine love with the intent that this collection will do good for us, but more importantly, that this collection will do good for others who deserve your love more than we. Help us give in a way that's acceptable, that's pleasing, helps your kingdom to grow. In Jesus' name we pray.